Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Red Dusk in which we're playing as Vietnam or the Socialist Republic of Vietnam. I'm your host, Mr. Vietnam Lover, but we live by Le Ca Phu. So I want to read about him because I've never played as Vietnam so far um, in Red Dusk. Vietnam was located in a region considered a cradle of mankind. One of the earliest agricultural centers practicing wet or armed far rice farming, where the stone and metallurgical revolutions took place in the early 20th century, Western capitalist countries entered the period of imperialism and colonialism. Through missionaries and trade, the French gradually dominated Vietnam. For the first time in history, Vietnam had to cope with the invasion of a Western industrial country. In the context, some Vietnamese intellectuals were aware of the need to carry out reforms, bringing the country out of stagnation and save national independence. Many reform plans were proposed, yet rejected, by the Nguyen dynasty. Subsequently, the country was driven into backwardsness and deadlock and became a semi feudal colony for nearly 100 years, from 1858 to 1945. The founding of the Communist Party of Vietnam on February 3, 1930 was an important milestone in Vietnamese history. In August of 45, though, under the leadership of the Communist Party headed by President Ho Chi Minh, the Vietnamese people successfully launched an uprising to seize power and the Democratic Republic of Vietnam came into being on the September 2nd, 1945. The newly founded Vietnam had to go through another 30 long year struggle for national liberation and reunification. Uh, Dien Bien Phu victory in the Geneva Accord in 1954, but ended the war of resistance against the French colonialists, according to the court. The country was temporarily separated along the 17th parallel north into two territories, North Vietnam and South Vietnam, which were expected to be reunified two years later with a general election. South Vietnam was ruled by pro-French and then pro-U.S. government in Saigon. Though the Saigon regime attempted to, per to prevent reunification, it failed to subdue peace and national reunification campaigns. As a result, the National Liberation Front for South Vietnam was founded on December 20th, 1964. Between 50 54 and 50 75, Vietnam had a stand up for national liberation and unification. Support the South Vietnam regime. The U.S. had military aid in over half a million soldiers of Vietnam and started bombing North Vietnam in 64. To fulfill Ho President Ho Chi Minh's aspiration that nothing is more precious than independence and freedom, the Vietnamese people experienced untold hardship and sacrifice. In 1973, the Paris Accord was assigned for restoration of peace in Vietnam with withdrawal of U.S. troops. The war came to an end in the spring of 75 as the Patriotic Armed Forces launched an offensive against the Saigon regime, liberated southern Vietnam, and reunified the country since then. The unified Vietnam was ushered into a new era of peace, unification, and national construction. The Democratic Republic of Vietnam was renamed the Socialist Republic of Vietnam on April 25th, 1976, along with the Socialist Republic and the Communist Party. So we got a new millennium here. It's 2000. It's January 1st. The world's changing, and so must we. As one of the last three nations where the red flag still flies proudly in the wind, we have always stood up by principles and beliefs. However, we must also adapt and evolve with the times. Our country has faced many challenges in the past, and we have emerged stronger every time. Now, it's time for us to take the next step forward and embrace the new millennium. So we're definitely going to be struggling here. We barely have a fleet, which makes sense. Also, if I mispronounce things, I apologize. I am not good at pronouncing things in general. It is what it is. Um, we're going to do that. We have a minuscule air force, which I'm just going to go ahead and shove them all here. And combine them, if we possibly can. Um, transports. Okay, maybe not. Well, train until you die. Oh, or blow up. So that's the economy. Healing scars of war. Our place in the world. Soviet brother. Interesting. Improve relations with China. Change limits to neutrality. Move away from Moscow's influence. Status of the economy. I think I want to do status of the economy. I want to build ourselves up quite well. So, uh, <clears throat> the economy of the Vietnamese state is not at its best capabilities. But we have seen darker times in the French colonization of uh, China. Those darn Europeans didn't know how to handle pennies, really. In any case, if we want to revive our state in an excellent way and elevate it to one of the most optimized models for the economy of the social state, we must immediately begin economic reforms, invest money in our state companies, improve agriculture, and sign a couple packs with the capitalist powers, but it's only for the good of our country. Ethiopia is launching its offensives. There you go. And what do we got here? Four pillars. Oh, status general secretary dominated. As part of the Vietnamese collective leadership system, four pillars is a term used to describe the four most important leadership titles of Vietnam, including General Secretary, President, Chairman of the National Assembly, and Prime Minister. The four pillars are considered symbols of the stability and sustainability of the Vietnamese political system. With the constant change of the modern world, the four pillars have always maintained their position and maintained stability in Vietnamese politics. With the role and importance, the four pillars are interested and closely watched by both domestic and inter international public opinion. Any change or signal from the four pillars could have a major impact on Vietnam's politics and economy. The General Secretary is the highest leadership title in the Communist Party of Vietnam, is the head of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of Vietnam, and presides over the work of the Central Committee and the Politburo. The General Secretary is also naturally the highest leader in the political system of Vietnam. The President is the head of the state or the head of the Socialist Republic of Vietnam. 
The president is responsible for supervising all activities of the National Assembly, the government, people's council, and the people's court. The president is also a signatory of international agreements and represents Vietnam in diplomatic activities. The chairman of the National Assembly is the head of the National Assembly and National Assembly Standing Committee of the Socialist Republic of Vietnam. The president of the National Assembly is responsible for chairing meetings of the National Assembly and Standing Committee of the National Assembly, supervising the activities of the government, and representing the National Assembly and diplomatic activities, and the prime minister now, is the head of the government of the Socialist Republic of Vietnam. The Prime Minister is responsible for directing the government's activities, administering national development policies and programs, and dealing with important economic, social, and political issues in the country. The Prime Minister also represents the government activities. Uh, oh my god, rampant corruption, holy crap. Pham Van Tra, holy snipes. A new Vietnam. Decades of wars and embargoes have made our country one of the most backwards and poorest countries in the world, however. This has uh, changed uh, since the Sixth Party Congress. With the Doi Moi policy, a series of socio-economic reforms have Im implemented and have slowly brought our country from the ashes. Now Vietnam enters a new millennium with a held eye and full of hope. It's a long road, but the future's certainly bright. The future's here. I want that, uh, those factories. State support own enterprise. As I mentioned before, we want our state to be a model for other social states. We must think about how to strengthen ourselves internally and include the majority, if not all, the relations with four non-social states. And the best way to strengthen our state is to invest in state-owned companies, so to strengthen the independence of our country and increase the GDP per capita. So we're going to send volunteers. We're first going to go to here. If you want to do this, please go right ahead. We're going to back Ethiopia because I think we should be okay to do that. Now, something unique about Vietnam that I've discovered. Uh, well, actually, what do we have here? Something that, oh, well, that sucks. Um, that I realized is, uh, rocket artillery. Do we have, we don't even have towed artillery. That's not good. Crane is fine. We've got support equipment. We need motorized. Um, yeah, we're gonna need okay. We're gonna need some actual planes. We are so backwards, it's not funny. Um, main battle tanks at least, and yeah, all stuff is not bad. At least the main battle tanks. Rocket artillery is that here twice? Yeah, it's gonna here twice. All right, and convoys. You can fish with your boat here, uh, but we do have marines though, which is nice to start with. Even though I don't really care for it, it's template. We're probably going to start off with infantry here, which is not bad, actually. Um, support companies I can work with. And armored divisions, to, you know, it's not bad. So, we're going to send people over here if we possibly can. Send some volunteers. We can send up to three. Alright, good to know. I don't really want to send the mountaineers because they have armor and that's not worthwhile sending them. So, Boop, 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 boop. Can we send any planes? I would love to, but no. And we're there. Welcome to Ethiopia, everybody. Oh, uh, you know what? You can come here, too. Boop, boop. And then, agricultural stuff. Whispers in the dark. So far, for so long, our fellow citizens have suffered under the oppressive rule of the communist regime, suppressing any patriots who dare fight for freedom and democracy. However, the grip on the nation is weakening. With the collapse of communism in Eastern Europe and the dying Soviet Union, people are slowly awakening to the true nature of communism. Just as the courageous Europeans stood up against tyranny, the Vietnamese people will rise up against their brutal dictatorship. Across the sea, countless Vietnamese broad yearn to return to their homeland, a land that is genuinely free, free from the grip of communism. We will never surrender, knowing that the leader of the free world, the United States of America, stands behind us. Together, we'll strive for a brighter future where liberty and democracy prevail. Better dead than red. Oh boy. Promote agricultural collectives. Another move we can implement to further strengthen our states to promote the collective agriculture system. Collectivism in Russia was a huge mistake. It was badly handled and brought many more side effects than good, but it wasn't entirely a misfortune. In fact, it handled, if handled correctly, as the administration will, the collectivism is one of the communism's greatest gifts, gifts to humanity because it promotes collaboration that will lead to greatest levels of productivity among the departments. Loyalty, because adhering to a collectivist culture can build a deep sense of loyalty among employees. Loyalty here entails caring about the success of each other as employees and trusting one another to improve the productivity of a company by working together. And other advantages such as peace and stability, efficiency and encourage selflessness. Economic reform. In recent years, our country <clears throat> has experienced rapid economic growth thanks to economic reforms, however. The situation remains complex due to the impact of the financial Asian financial crisis and the damage caused by floods in the central provinces. Nevertheless, the average gross domestic product has continued to increase. In the period between 96 and 99, it grew at an average rate of 6.1%, although the growth rate slowed to 4.8% in 99 compared to 98, which is the lowest growth since 1990. This overall trend is still positive, of course. Following the disbandment of uh, Comic Con, our country faces challenges in finding new trade partners. Well, uh, while we still rely on Soviet trade and aid with China, um, 
and trade with China. The government is actively seeking to join WTO and ASEAM. Additionally, negotiations with various countries are underway to address this trade dilemma. The living standards of the stable population mostly improved, surpassing the previous year. Efforts to reduce poverty have yielded encouraging results. Many impoverished individuals, particularly those in disadvantaged areas, have benefited from poverty reduction programs and managed to escape the poverty line. As a result, the number of households experiencing food poverty has decreased. Overall, the poverty rate in 99 was 13.33% lower than in previous years. This trend holds true for urban, rural, and other regions as well. Which sounds fantastic. We need some wins here, man. Open the stock market. One of the biggest drawbacks in socialism or communism is the market. In fact, communist states like the USSR, for example, tend to close their markets and trade only with socialist or communist nations only. This system leads to total or partial death of a country's economy, so it must be objective. Vietnam's opening to the stock market can only benefit our country enormously, which at the moment has a strong need to strengthen itself as an economy and regional power. Even though this opening would mean betraying Marxism, we must think that as a social state, the well-being of our population comes first, even before ideological precepts. Emergence of the Ga State and rising tensions in the central. In the central. According to in recent intelligence reports, a newly formed reactionary group has emerged within the U.S. Adopting the moniker Degas State, inspired by the infamous uh, figure Krokolk, they have propagated the false notion of seceding ethnic minorities in the Central Highlands, advocating for the establishment of an independent Protestant state. Several remnants of this notorious terrorist group of the Fuller Roll have aligned themselves with this faction, exacerbating concerns raised by the Ministry of Public Security, which have highlighted an uptick in unrest within the Central Highlands. Ethnic minorities have been instigated, of course, in opposing the government of the Socialist Republic of Vietnam. Oh. Within the United States, huh? It's imperative that we exercise caution and response with the to counter this impending threat. Those responsible for shedding the people's blood must be uh, must face due justice. Anarchists. That's kind of cool. Communist Party, right wing nationalist. Every party is either conservative or the, com the communist state, huh? Well then. Okay, you guys are just killing your own divisions off. Not good. Any upgrades? Yeah, not yet. Let's concentrate our guys here. And our guys aren't great, but we'll get experience and whatnot. Can we trade anything? Buy anything? No? Okay. Sign Vietnam US trade agreement. Well, the time for Vietnam to get involved again against the American giant. The last battle we fought in the tropical forest and jungles of Indochina with firearms and grenades, but this battle will be fought using the pen diplomacy. The BTA, bilateral trade agreement with the USA, will guarantee to us and vice versa necessary conditions for the products, businesses, and nationals of the other side have fair access to compete in the other's markets. Currently, neither side is being very cooperative on this treaty, but we're still to see the treaty signed as the majority of discussions taking place between our diplomats and the Americans are mostly concerned about concessions, tariffs, and of course so on. Hmm, give me more consumer goods to work with. Sri Lanka? Cool. Century Leap Year. Nice, if you want a battle here. PlayStation 2. Oh, oh, must have an update. PlayStation 2 hits shelves. Market changing news have come out of Japan as following a full year since the announcement to the press. The PlayStation 2 has been finally placed on shelves and slowly making its way to the whole world. Reviews claim that the PS2 is a massive game changer in the console industry as its versatility and previously unseen three dimensional graphics have left all customers astonished. The device is provided with a DVD reader capable of playing both video games, even from the original PlayStation through backwards compatibility to movies, contributing to it with its appeal. It seems that Sony seriously outdone itself with its brand new device. Critics even predict that this might be one of the best selling consoles of all time, far surpassing Nintendo and Microsoft, and setting much higher standards throughout the entire tech industry. What an advancement. I remember I had my own PS2. I think I got it in 2004. New TV show. A television show, Quiz Show for the High School Students, jointly organized by the Ministry of Education and Vietnam Television, was launched today. The program is named The Road to Mount Olympia, with the idea of a knowledge-based mountain climbing competition for contestants. The first person to reach the summit will win the laurel wreath. Notably, the champ will be awarded a full scholarship to Moscow State University, attracting many participants to register. Kids, don't, don't let your parents see that. Alright, so we can't even win there. Okay, good enough. Oh my god. Corruption. 50 years of resistance. From the foundation of the Vietnam in 1941 to the end of the Sino-Vietnamese conflicts in 1991, Vietnam has finally found peace. Well, 
Hopefully. Hello? Hello? If they're attacking us, I'm okay with that too. The Union of Reactionary. The essence of the Vietnamese people is often timid and complacent, content with a bare minimum. In 20, 30 years, the essence of this people will be self-destructive when resources are depleted, when the forests of gold and the seas of silver are exhausted, and when the generation of 50-somethings is gone, leaving only a horde of zombies. Driven by greed and laziness, they'll collapse on their own because of whatever they can scam, job already devoured. The problem is there won't be another Washington to lead a revolution, so the ne nearest way for us to save our future for our families is a secret resettlement. Those opportunists aren't just scraping away the essence of this nation to mitigate or migrate to capitalist country. The intellectuals are no different. Either they actively leave or passively leave through the path of the political asylum. Therefore, the way out for us, those with aspirations, those who seek foolish nature of the people, as a seek, uh, or see the foolish nature of the people, as a seek a more developed society where intellectual values are esteemed higher, rather than remaining a nation that values superficial appearances and where money reigns supreme. Being born here is our greatest shame. Well, I'll work on it. Our place in the world. We have a desire to place in this world we wish to remain neutral and have good relations with the neighboring countries. We also want to improve our relations and remain in good terms with their socialist allies and healing scars of war. Decades have passed since the end of the glorious res resistance war against the U.S. imperialists for national salvation, yet the wounds of conflict continue to linger throughout the nation. Despite remarkable progress in rebuilding and modernizing the country, many areas still bear the scars of war. From unexploded ordnance and the Agent, Origin Agent Orange contamination to ruin infrastructure and displaced communities. It's time to confront these challenges head on and ensure a brighter future for all Vietnamese people. Oh, what do we have here? Regrouping, recovery, attack, and defense. I like that. Can we stop getting, like, forced through here? Like, what's going on? Peasant protest. Thousands of peasants participated in large scale protests that took place across the entire country of Thai Bin, joined by retired members of the Communist Party of Vietnam. The people raised banners high with slogans such as Long Live the Communist Party of Vietnam, Great President Ho Chi Minh Lives Forever in Her Cause, Down with the Corrupt, Down with the Cronies. Protesters have occupied the headquarters of many, many district people's committees and even at the Thai Bin radio and television station. The police force has been completely overwhelmed with at least 10 individuals being taken hostage by the protesters. Many homes. And local officials have been invaded and vandalized by the people. The situation is extremely tense. What? Oh crap, that's not good. Yeah, we better have political power as is. Why are you trying to jip us here? The letter. Kong Tri, September 11th, 1972, my dear family. As I stated here today, I'm putting down the final lines just in case I have unearthed the security on the ground so that you won't perceive it as a sudden event. Dear Mom, by the time you read this letter, I will have departed this world forever. You must, uh, hello, uh, be overwhelmed with grief. You raised me in your loving arms from a very young age, and before I had the chance to pay the gift of life, I found myself leaving you with the heaviest sorrow in the world. I understand the immense hardships you've endured, but I implore you to wipe away your tears and continue living until the day you can celebrate victory. Although I'm no longer with you, you may live to be a hundred years old. I will always be by your side as if I've de dedicated my entire life to the future of our fatherland. My love, every letter of from you that reached me during my time away was a wellspring of encouragement. Yet this letter, reaching you now, carries the greatest sadness. We haven't had the chance to live together for long, though we are still in so much of our time, love, and affection. While others enjoy marital bliss, I've been deprived of the happiness and forced to be part away from you. I understand that you may not be able to read this letter, but please wipe away your tears. My only wish for you is to remain healthy. My dearest, if possible, carry on for you're so very young. I hope you'll always remember me in light incense on the anniversary of my passing. Be a dutiful daughter-in-law to your mother and a caring sister to your siblings. Farewell, Mom. Farewell, my beloved. Farewell to my family and hometown. Sin yours sincerely, Lee Van Hyun. Request from local authority. Following the status in Tai Bin, the Provincial Party Committee of Tai Bin believes that the hostile acts of sabotage, along with the dissatisfaction and opposition of retired uh, officials, are the cause, and they are trying to convince the central government that there is a contradiction between the enemy and us. We're also urging the Vietnamese People's Police and the Vietnamese People's Army to come to Taibin to suppress the protesters. However, many doubts have arisen. Why resort to such strong forces to oppress a few peasants? Why are the peasants so agitated? Information from Comrade Nguyen Van Hoa, Deputy Head of the Agriculture Cooperative of An Ninh Commune, 
state that people believe the mobilization of contributions to build rural infrastructures such as electricity, roads, and schools and stations is excessive and lacks democracy. While living conditions are still difficult, common officials have committed irregularities in the use of people's contributions, suggesting more peaceful measures such as negotiation with the protesters. What if you don't listen to them? Hmm. What are we not listening to the people? Hmm. Why so resort to such strong force to suppress a few peasants? What if we listen, just listen to them? I don't know, we'll see what happens. We have different several paths here too, so basically what they really boil down to is defeat in the Indochina War. We gotta win in the Indochina War. And win Tan Dung. Um, defeat in the Indochina War, so. We'll see, we got quite a few different things here, so. Revolutionary government, this guy, coalition for a free Vietnam path. So we'll see. Market socialist oriented market economy. Well, we finally concluded the majority of reforms, including the most important considering our economic field. What a wonder. And now Vietnam can be proud of being an economic socialist model for most of the Asian leftist countries and governments. In fact, our firms have guaranteed that formation in a country more precisely in the economic system of a socialist economic model. Similar in some ways to the Yugoslavian one, but with the right and appropriate modifications to make fit perfectly into the context of our nation. And this, as seen, has brought only positive effects on our country. Reunification Day on April 30th, 1975, the Red Flags of Liberty, representing the National Liberation Front of South Vietnam, floated triumphantly over the Indian Independent Palace, marking the long-awaited reunification of Vietnam after over 30 years of division. The victory on April 30th, 1975, stands as a monumental achievement in the ongoing struggle for national social liberation, spearheaded by our party and guided by President Ho Chi Minh. It represents a heroic and illustrious chapter in our nation's millennia-old journey of nation building and defense. Our army and people triumphed over U.S. imperialism and the Saigon puppet regime, bringing a glorious end to a three-decade-long struggle for independence, freedom, and reunification of our homeland, and marking the conclusion of over a century of imperial oppression. This victory stands as a radiant milestone in the annals of mankind's struggle for freedom. The triumph of the Vietnamese people serves to inspire and galvanize oppressed peoples worldwide instilling in them the courage to rise up in pursuit of national independence, peace, democracy, and social progress, as serves as a beacon of hope for the nations engaged in the struggle for national liberation and anti-neocolonialism. Let's cheer! Apologies for that, for, uh, um, you know, going between having a fade in and fade out, but protests under control, look at that. Deal. With town support from the central government and concerted effort by the law enforcement agencies, the protests in Tai Nguyen has eventually been quelled. Many extremist individuals have been arrested. However, the core issue of unrest remains unsolved. To prevent a recurrence of the situation, the party committee of Tai Nguyen has proposed plans to increase the security budgets for the province to expand and modernize the provincial police force. Deal. Oh, crap. <sighs> okay. My goodness. Can you actually help out here? You actually might win here, and you might be able to win very easily here, which would be great. And then you immediately go in here so you can start uh, putting pressure and destroying all their units. Because we invested in Ethiopia. Well, okay, maybe not. There you go. This battle you won. Great job, guys. Uh, Vietnam, USA, bilateral agreement. Today in Washington, after four, more than four years and 12 rounds of bilateral negotiations, the Vietnam-United States Bilateral Trade Agreement BTA, has been signed and will come into effect by the end of 2001. Compared to previous trade agreements that our country has signed, the Vietnam-US BTA is a much broader scope detailing commitments to open trade in goods, services, investments related to trade, and intellectual property rights related to the products of both citizens and legal entities of countries. Both countries, of course. Upon the BTA taking effect, the United States commits to applying normal trade relations and most favored nation status, reducing the average import tax to goods imported from Vietnam from 40% to 4%, opening the market for Vietnamese exporters. The rules of the game by the U.S. are very clear. Provisions will be negotiated based on the principles of the Tr World Trade Organization, or WTO. Uh, therefore, the successful negotiation of this agreement involves significant imports for Vietnam, serving as a trial run before entering the global arena of the WTO. Interesting. 
and prove Vietnam welfare. As a nation has been ravaged by war, we understand the sacrifices made by the blood of the Patriots. Despite efforts to provide for their welfare, many veterans still face challenges in their daily lives. We need to improve the welfare of our veterans, providing them with better health care, housing, and job opportunities. By doing so, we can honor uh, the service of and sacrifice of our brave men and women and ensure they are not forgotten. Help those in need. Years of war have left many people in our society suffering from physical, emotional, and financial trauma. These are the people who <clears throat> have been victims of war and remnants, or remnants, the mother who lost her son's families affected by Agent Orange, and those, of course, who were hurt by the remnant bombs. As our duty to take care of those who have sacrificed so much for our country, therefore we'll launch a comprehensive program to, finish those who, to help finish those who are in need. This program will provide financial assistance, uh, health care, and emotional support to those who are suffering from the scars of war. Our ultimate goal is to ensure that no one is left behind and that everyone receives the support and care that they, of course, deserve. A socialist oriented market economy. Market economy is an, is an economic organization reflecting a certain level of human civilization development. Since ancient times, it has mainly existed and developed under capitalism, which is a decisive factor in the existence and development of capitalism. Capitalism is known how to maximize the advantages of the market economy to serve the potential business development goals, seeks profits, and objectively promote the strong development of society's productive forces. However, capitalist forces and market economy are not omnipotent. Alongside its positive aspects, it also has inherent flaws due to the dominance of private ownership capital or capitalism. Therefore, as analyzed and forecasted by Karl Marx, Capitalism must be inevitably yield to a more civilized and humane mode of production and regime. Although capitalism has been and is trying every means to self-adjust, to adapt by developing a social market economy, creating social capital, people's capitalism, welfare state, meaning more direct state intervention and more social care, due to the contradictions inherent in its nature, capitalism cannot solve these issues on its own. It is only temporary, temporarily alleviate the contradictions. The modern capitalist market economy is increasingly showing trends of self-negation and self-evolution towards transitioning to a post-industrial stage, following the trend in socialization. This is an objective necessity, the law of social development. If humanity wants to advance, a society wants to develop, and then it cannot stop its capitalist market economy. In the recent Central Executive Committee meeting, the party introduced the concept of socialist market mar socialist oriented market economy to replace a multi-component commodity economy oriented towards socialism operated under market mechanism with state management choosing the model of a socialist oriented market economy is not a subjective connection between market economy and socialism but a craftsman application of the objective trend of the market economy in today's era it can also be said that that market economy is common while the socialist oriented market economy is distinctive to vietnam suitable for vietnam specific conditions and characteristics the development of strategy of socialist oriented market economy as a selective absorption of the achievements of human civilization, the promotion of the positive role in the market economy promoting the development of production capacity, socialization of labor, improvements of technology, enhancement of product quality, creation of wealth for society, and improvement of people's lives. At the same time, effective measures must be taken to limit the negative aspects of the market economy. The formation of the socialist oriented market economy mindset is not only a theoretical exploration and innovation of socialist ideology, but also a choice. An affirmation of the revolutionary and creative path and model of development in Vietnam's reality. The development of socialist oriented market economy is an inevitable process consistent with the laws of the times and meeting the development requirements of the country. Interesting. Determined to fight and determined to win. Yeah, good. Mr. Shun Brun, we have a secret weapon. Don't smile when I tell you this. Our secret weapon is nationalism. To have nationhood, which is a sign of maturity, is greater than any weapon in the world from Ho Chi Minh. What made a small country able to stand up to a much stronger enemy? What made a backward army able to defeat the most powerful advanced army in the world for the Vietnamese people? The answer is nothing but iron will and pa passion of patriotism. Over a thousand years of history, every time the country is invaded, that spirit gets ignited, forms a huge and powerful wave, passes through all dangers and difficulties, and engulfs their enemies. Both the traitors and the invaders. The patriotism of each person and each ethnic group is a part of the patriotic tradition of the Vietnamese country. Patriotism is the most prominent and encompassing tradition that has, all, has become the strength and driving force to defeat all invaders. Dark is the night. Now the flag of the pole of the Imperial Citadel does it fly high through the night. Will it retain its red hue tomorrow morning? The night of the casting away everything into silence, yet why was he awake? He sighed deeply with a sense of weariness, questioning himself. Why am I still awake? Why am I still passionately pursuing a better future? He wondered. <clears throat> he sighs again, reminiscing about the glorious years of the revolution, recalling those who have fallen, about the, thinking about those who are still alive, quietly, without a trace. Drawing a deep breath, he feels a tremor of fear, a weariness that seeps into his bones. Disenchanted with society, he senses the erosion of, erosion of ethics, the abandonment of uh, cherished values. Amidst a cloak of darkness, uh, silent tears of the verses of his soul, weeping into the night's embrace. When the socialist fatherland in danger, a true patriot will do something. But look, these rebel forces are going to win. Right wing nationals, well, send you volunteers here. There. Let's 
So you are the Republic. The Republic. Oh. The re Liberians united for reconciliation and democracy. Well, we're gonna go... Oh, well, I guess we could, could have done Sudan more. Not Liberia. Insert lore. Who do we support? Rebels. I hope I made the right choice. See what you can do. You hear it learn. The fight against neoliberalism. Currently, our country is beginning to witness the infiltration of neoliberalism, an economic theory focused on the values of a global free market economy, a free trade, and an unrestricted capital flow. Advocates of this ideology advocate for minimal government principles, minimal spending, minimal taxation, minimal regulation, and minimal direct intervention in the economy. They believe that market forces, by their natural essence, will prevail across many legal and social domains, bringing about the greatest common good. However, Neoliberalism really is a rebranding of imperialistic free market capitalism, often referred to not just as an economic theory, but as an enforcement of global capitalism and the power of multinational corporations, as well as the impact of free trade on the lives of the working class and social structures. Neoliberalism promotes the interests of multinational corporations who are the largest financial institutions of the world economy and the most powerful nations, especially in the European Union and the United States. These institutions justify neoliberalism, their policies imbued with neoliberalism, dominating the economic and political arena of multinational corporations. States may abolish markets as well as promote them. Free markets, no matter how far they go, will still require the state, protected by the legal system, to prevent business activities from being infringed upon, to represent economic and trade interests on the global stage, and to play a role in macroeconomic management. Without a strong state, there is no market, no market force, and no socialist-oriented market economy. Vietnam's doi moi process does not follow the path of neoliberalism of capitalism. Regardless, it should not be forgotten that neoliberalism is to rejuvenate capitalism to prolong the dominance of the capitalist rule. We need to understand the neoliberal neoliberalism to defeat this dangerous doctrine. All we have is interesting. Increased budget of the Veterans Association. By increasing the budget for the Veterans Association, we can ensure that soldiers who leave the field can still devote themselves to the cause of building a country. They will participate in building the party and defending the achievements of the revolution, participate in the socio-economic construction, and more, of course. 1v1, heroic mother of Vietnam. Hey, infantry leader and mountaineer. And some corner of the earth. Is there any mother, uh, any mother like the heroic Vietnamese mother Nguyen Tha? T, Tu, and Quang Nam, who willingly offered her descendants to the beloved fatherland of Vietnam in the struggle for national independence. When the mother sacrificed her fourth and fifth children, she encouraged her sixth, seventh, and eighth, and ninth children to go. Nine times she received death notices for her children. Two times she received death notices for her son-in-law and grandchildren. A total of eleven grandchildren sacrificed for the independent freedom of the fatherland. And then all the pain was compressed within the mother's heart. Recently, the mother of health of the mother Thu has weakened significantly. These hot, sunny days have made her sick again. Mother lies there on a small bed. Most of the space in her house is reserved for the memorial altars of her children and grandchildren. Every day, Tree, the eldest daughter, diligently lifts the mother to eat each meal. The care and support between these two women, nearly 170, the other 90, is a touching story rarely seen in life. The witch has long been empty of the mother's sitting figure. Mother only wanders around with her bed. Uh, for her, the concept of day and night, rain and sunshine is no longer important, as her eyes have grown dim. Amidst a fragrant smoke in the air, in every corner of the house, the images of her children exist. Her children from all over the country have come to be with her, to sit beside her, to hold her hand, to hear her call them, my dear. Among those children today are also the highest leaders of the party, the state, who have come to express deep gratitude to Mother, because today we are all her children. The lines written in the notebook at Mother Thu's house encompass all layers of the Vietnamese people. From veterans of the Liberation War to seven police officers who respectfully call her dear mother from the Nam Bo region, to students, uh, artists, and more. We stopped to contemplate for a long time in front of these lines. Reading them now still allows to somewhat imagine the sincere hearts of those children distant from their mother. I sat quietly beside my mother. I looked at her for a long time to admire her much. Perhaps I'm too young to understand what war is, the hardships that my mother overcome for us today. Thank you so much, Mom. I sincerely cry. Your son from Hanoi. Truly, we will never fully understand the hardships that the mother endured. The sacrifice is beyond human endurance that a person her mother had to bear. What pain could be greater than this? Hope that no matter that no mother sh again shall have to mourn her son and woe, but I have a feeling we're gonna have many more mothers woe. The greatest generation. As we commemorate the heroism and sacrifices of our predecessors in the struggle for national liberation, we must honor their legacy by strengthening our resolve to build a better Vietnam for future generations. The blood will not be wasted, eternal memory to the martyrs of the revolution. That's right. Um Republic of the Sudan. If you remember that, please your head. Uh, these guys are the government, I believe, and you guys are the rebels. People's liberation.
Eight's not bad. I hope we can get up to nine, too. The 55th anniversary of the August Revolution. <clears throat> Oh, perhaps centuries past, yet the autumn of August 45 so evokes strong emotions of the heart of every Vietnamese person about the miraculous nature of history. This is a sacred and triumphant victory of the revolution and the establishment of the Democratic Republic of Vietnam. In 45, Japan surrendered to the Allies. Both the Chinese and British forces that arrived to disarm the Japanese were not favorable for the Vietnamese Revolution. The British handed Vietnam back to the French, while the Chinese had dangerous intentions in the short and long term. The Vietnamese Revolution faced three types of enemies, hunger, ignorance, and foreign invaders. The situation was truly as delicate as a thousand pounds hanging by hair. From here onwards, our struggle against internal foes and foreign invaders is a struggle for Vietnam's right to enjoy freedom and independence. At that time, the people of Vietnam were citizens of an independent and free nation, no longer enslaved by feudalism and colonialism. The revolutionary faith, the statue of the Vietnamese people's participation in the revolution, had reached a new low. The young democratic republic of Vietnam was the aspiration of the Vietnamese people, so the unity of the community cannot be shaken is the strength of that state. The Democratic Republican were quite indeed new to a nation where over 90% of the population were illiterate, were grappling with hunger and hardship. However, none of these could hinder the determination and aspiration for freedom and independence of the country and the belief in the state by the people and for the people. The people had a deep understanding and grew weary by the colonial fuel regime. They could no longer endure a life under the unjust double yoke with unreasonable immoral practices that had persisted for nearly a century. Better to sacrifice all than to endure slavery to lose a fatherland. It was not just a slogan, it was the will and desire of our people. Therefore, there's no comparable strength, no force capable of obstructing this will. Today, fellow citizens, I let us honor the hero struggles and remember our fallen heroes. The August month, with its faith and hope, continues to illuminate the spirits of the Vietnamese people, empowering us to stay steadfast on the path of freedom, independence, democracy, and prosperity. Not for nothing is more precious than independence and liberty. Our place in the world. Yeah, I've read this earlier, so. Soviet brother. Red into China. And for relations with China. Our relations with the People's Republic of China started off positively at first, recognizing our independence and even supporting us during the wars against the imperial forces of France and America. Look at that. But then in the 70s, they illegally took over some of our islands as a part of the Khmer Rouge, which we had to take down, which initiated a long border conflict, which seriously harmed our economy. Since then, our relationship with China has been normalized, but we wish to improve it. Look at that. Beautiful. Not bad. Strengthened economic cooperation. China is an emerging superpower without a doubt, its economic power is massive. Not wanting to cooperate with them economically sounds foolish, so to strengthen our relations with them, we'll strengthen our economic ties with China and that we can hopefully improve our relations with them. Village of 1890, right after the unification of the nation, Vietnam probably initiated a rapid industrialization policy aiming to progress towards socialism. However, due to rigid adoption of the Soviet econ economic model, the lack of scientific and technical expertise, and the country has suffered immensely from the impacts of war. The industrialization process was executed in a disorderly manner, leading to a state of stagnation and eventual recession. The balance between supply and demand was adversely effective as the government prioritized heavy industry while neglecting the development of light industry. Additionally, agricultural output continuously declined, necessitating the importance of rice from the Soviet Union. The money reform in 18, 1985 further exacerbated the economic situation, resulting in a staggering 393% inflation rate. Despite various reforms efforts, reform efforts and corrective actions, the repercussions of the missteps from the 80s continue to cast a significant shadow over the economy. Wow, that sucks, man. Then what? Rampant corruption, holy crap. Individualism is the ultimate manifestation of the party's cultural degradation from Ho Chi Minh. The Doi Moi policy brought, by the, brought the rise of the economy as well as the rise of individualism. Since the introduction of economic reform measures, corruption has increased at an unprecedented rate, negatively affecting people's livelihoods in the national economy. Large flood. A large flood occurred in the Mekong Delta region, affecting eight provinces, resulting in 539 deaths, over 300 whom were children, 212 injuries, 890,000 ho ho homes, almost 14,000 classrooms, and 383 medical facilities flooded. 60,000 houses collapsed, swept away, or damaged, with over 62,000 ho households displaced, more than half a million people were requiring emergency relief. The damage to production, husbandry, infrastructure, and ecological environment was also significant, with an estimated total losses exceeding 4.6 billion Vietnamese dollars. 
As of now, the Mekong Delta region is about 27,000 hack hectares of rice and crop fields damaged, with 10,000 hack hectares completely lost. Various levees and embankments at all levels were severely damaged, with over 55,000 meters of provincial damage and national roads affected. Presumably, this is the largest flood in the past 76 years. Currently, the Ministry of Defense is in collaboration with the Ministry of Public Security is urgently implementing the relief and support measures for people in the flooded areas right now. Oh my, that's really bad. Can you actually become an organizer? N. C. Souvenant de Hanoi. We never see the time of betrothal again, lovers entwined beneath the flowering plum trees. We've stowed away in their finest boxes our daily dreams and customary joys. We have ever known our understood war, have left everything behind, saying to ourselves, let's go. Brother, is it you, pure hero of deliverance, passing by, singing, barefoot without shoes? The azure of our sky, the color of freedom, sings with the song, honor and hope. The sunlit bush, after freezing evening, speak to him every time the Vietnam that wants to live. He sings this song and his soul intoxicates with bewitching words, fatherland and liberty. Oh, the joy of building on a new dawn and discovering land of the hour of destiny. Then here's our offering to Vietnam of tomorrow, and here's our blood for an eternal dawn. Then we'll see that quiet happiness. Off living modestly in our tranquil cottages, rice will turn green on our verdant fields. Lovers will go beneath the flowering plum trees. Le Vietnam un et indivisible. Interesting. Couple come in there. Red into China. We've always tried and fought for friendly relations between our neighbors, and we wish to accomplish just that. Cambodia and Laos are our socialist allies, just like the Soviet Union or any other socialist country that is friendly towards us. We wish to keep these two very close to us and work with them so we may build a more secure environment for all of us. Agriculture Development Plan, which we're working on. Doi Moi is the name given to the economic reforms initiated by Vietnam in 1986 with the goal of creating a socialist oriented market economy. Doi Moi policy refers specifically to these reforms that sought to transition Vietnam from a command economy to a socialist oriented market economy. The Doi Moi reforms were initiated by the Communist Party of Vietnam in 86 during the party's sixth national congress. These reforms introduced a greater role for market act forces for the coordination of economic activity between enterprises and government agencies and allowed for private ownership of small enterprises and the creation of a stock exchange for both state and non-state ent entities. Interesting. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, not ideal. Ah, uh, tenuous relationship with China, of course. There you go. That's what we like to see. Oh. Reform communists versus communists. Well, alright then. I'd like to get another research lab, but you know. Congo War. No, Democratic, Democratic, Sierra Leone. Public of Sierra Leone. Diamond Profits, I like that. Commonwealth. It looks like you guys are doing better than the other group, so... We will see. Who else do we have here? Angola? Uh, they're still pretty much mixed, so let's see. How about that? Mutual defense treaty is probably a pretty good thing to do. We'll propose a great defense for us in Cambodia and Laos. That would be a great step in furthering relations with them. If they sign the treaty, they will need to agree to a number of articles that will remain in effect indefinitely. The purpose of the treaty itself is to defend our nations from any potential attackers or enemies. Our relationship with China. is tenuous the best. Oh, the president visits China. In the relationship between the Socialist Republic of Vietnam and the People's Republic of China is truly complex and enduring. With the various ups and downs in the 50, 1950, specifically, China was the first country to recognize the Democratic Republic of Vietnam and actively supported us in two resistance wars against French colonialism and American imperialism. In fact, China's support not only did diminish, did not diminish, but also increased during the Khrushchev era, when the common policy of peaceful coexistence that led the Soviet Union to significantly reduce its aid to us, however. In 1974, when a country had not yet silenced the guns, the Chinese Navy blatantly seized many islands in the Parcel Islands illegally. After the reunification of a country, China continued to support the genocidal Khmer Rouge regime in harassing and invading our borders. 
In late 1978, we could no longer tolerate this and proceed to overthrow the Khmer Rouge regime. The Chinese army crossed the border into large numbers and attacked the country. This led to a prolonged 12-year border conflict, forcing the country to maintain a massive irregular military force, negatively affecting the economic economy beyond measure. After ongoing reforms, the Chinese military gained clear advantages in the undisputed border areas, causing severe damage to our border defense forces. Recognizing the, these realities along with significant weakening of the Soviet Union in 1991, after many rounds of negotiations, despite remaining disputes at sea, both countries finally normalized relations. Since then, the Golden 16 Golden Letter Principle has been established in the relationship between the two countries. Our borders are interlinked, ideals interconnected, cultures interwoven, interface intertwined. Now China is asserting itself strongly, emerging as one of the true challenges to both the Soviet Union and the U.S. in the new millennium of the rapidly developing economy. If we play our cards right, we all benefit from China's rise, and the President visits China. This morning, President Tran Duc Luang left Hanoi to make an official friendly visit to the People's Republic of China with the invitation of President Jiang Zemin. President Tran Duc Luang's visits aimed to affirm Vietnam's, Vietnam's consistent policy of attaching great importance to comprehensive cooperation with China, maintaining and promoting the current positive and stable development of bilateral relations and implementing high-level agreements between the two countries and con concretizing the motto of friendly neighbors comprehensive cooperation, long-term stability, and future-oriented into specific cooperative co cooperation contents, enhancing mutual trust, cooperation, and friendship between the two countries in the 21st century. Good luck! Delimination Agreement in the Gulf of Tonkin During President Tran du Duc Luang's visit to China, Vietnam and China signed an agreement on the delimination of the Gulf of Tonkin regarding maritime boundaries, exclusive economic zones, and the continental shelves after more than 30 years of negotiation efforts. From the successful revolution in each country in the late 50s, Vietnam and China agreed to maintain the status quo of their border based in 1887 and the 1895 Sino-French tr treaties and agreed to undertake border demarcation at a suitable time. In the late 70s, Vietnam and China formally negotiated uh, the border issue, however, due to various reasons, the negotiations did not progress and were interrupted for a long time. Over the past hundred years since the signing of the Sino French Treaties, the border between the two countries has undergone various changes due to weather, geographical changes, and political and social developments in each country, as well as in the bilateral relationship, especially the border war with in 1979. For example, descriptions and maps may be incomplete and inaccurate or unclear. Border markers installed since the late 19th century were not determined using coordinate grids, many markers were damaged, lost, or shifted, and many original map fragments are missing. In some border areas, population movements do not follow legal boundaries, therefore, disputes have arisen between the two sides, ranging from differing perceptions of border direction to the actual management history of the border. A signing agreement opens a new chapter of history. Of the bilateral relationship, for the first time, Vietnam and China have a clear maritime border, including maritime boundaries, boundaries of economic exclusion zones, and continental shelves in the Gulf of Tonkin with international significance. Nice. Soviet brother. The roots of a relationship with the Soviet Union run deep. It started in the early 20th century, and is still continuing strong in the dawn of the century. We wish to keep our relations that way since we are brotherly nations and the Union has been crucial in our national liberation. Oh, we're just going straight to partial mobile then. Democrat victory. Oh, look at that. Yay, it's a damn one. The Democrats are back. Look at that. ISS opens. Marvelous. Humanity has officially established a foothold in space. The first long-term residents, labeled as Expedition 1, have reached uh, the International Space Station after two years since the station's departure from Earth. Oh, look at that. The crew was composed from nearly three people, being Americans William Shepard, Susan Helms, and James Voss, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, collaborating with several other space agencies in Europe and Asia. Uh, it's planning to keep astronauts on the ISS until the end of 2015, exactly 15 years from now. The dual roles to upkeep the station's structure and carry out construction and research tasks in its facilities. Many countries throughout the globe cherish this incredible achievement for mankind, seeing as a rare moment of international cooperation and as a demonstration of what combined human intelligence can do. Marvelous. And Dmitry Azov elected as a general secretary of the CPSU. Oh boy. Today, the government of the Soviet Union has announced that the 10th leader of the USSR and the new general secretary of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union is Marshal Dmitry Timofeyevich Yazov. Being an experienced officer and one of the man, main agitators of the August coup, Yazov was expected to become the next leader. With all of the greetings and celebrations done, many believe, believe that Yazov has already begun to secure his power of the state with the help of the Soviet army. And outside observers believe that due to Yazov's military career and his expansionist outlook, uh, it's very likely the world will see more wars and aggressive foreign policies from the Soviet Union in the following decade. Is war on the horizon? Probably. Crap, now they threw in more divisions. We were doing so well here. And now we're being supported by the South Africans, and we've lost our place. After the visit, according to the reports from the Vietnam uh, businesses, the total value of contracts signed with the Chinese partners during the President Tran Duc Luang's official goodwill visit to China has reached over 1.9 billion USD. 
It's a record figure achieved by the Vietnamese uh, business delegation accompanying the party and the state leaders on four visits. Oh, whoops, hold on. Boop. Comrade Vu Tien Lok, chairman of the Vietnam um, Chamber of Commerce and Industry, stated that although many businesses did not immediately secure economic contracts during the trip, they have established many promising partner relationships. As noteworthy that up to two thirds of Vietnam's strong corporations have actively engaged in business with China. Speaking of the Vietnamese businesses in Nanning, the capital city of Guangxi province, President Tran Duc Luang urged businesses to actively enhance the competitiveness of Vietnamese goods, gradually increase the volume of exports to China, and contribute to reducing trade deficits. Great. Complete the eradication of illiteracy. Over the last decade, in implementing the resolutions of the 6th, 7th, and 9th of National Party Congresses, the education sector, along with various levels, of, levels and branches, has actively carried out the work of eradicating illiteracy and promoting primary education, after, as of now. The entire country has achieved national standards for eradicating illiteracy and promoting primary education, and is consolidating and promoting these results, continuing vigorously to develop regular education. If before 1945, 95% of Vietnam's literate population was illiterate, now 94% of the population can read and write. 61 out of 61 provinces with 97% of districts and nearly 98% of communes and wards have completed the plan. However, in reality, there are still 235 communes that have not reached the national standard in this area. The education sector is aimed to continue to achieve the largest, the target of a learning society by 2010. Learn, learn more, learn forever. Right. Happy December 1st, everybody. Boop. Well, would you look at that? Why would you attack up here when you can attack these guys first? You're going to get nowhere with, with attacking down south. Or north first, I should say. Build. Yeah, that's pretty normal. Our relationship with the Soviet Union. The relationship between the Communist Party of Vietnam and the Communist Party of the Soviet Union was formed very early on. The architect and solid foundation of that relationship was none other than the leader Nguyen Al Kok, Ho Chi Minh. After many years of searching for a way to save the country abroad in June of 1923, leader Nguyen Ai Kok set foot in the lands of uh, Vladimir uh, Lenin, and when he discovered the truth of the times that the October Revolution opened the path of liberation for nations and all mankind, including the Vietnamese people. Under the light of the October Revolution in Russia, Directly influenced by Lenin's thesis on the national colonial questions, he led the Vietnamese Revolution along the path of the October Revolution, sending many outstanding youth to study in the Soviet Union. Many of these outstanding young people, upon returning home, became excellent leaders of the Vietnamese Revolutionary Movement. From the early days of the nation's establishment, developing relations with the Soviet Union has always been the top priority in the foreign policy of the Democratic Republic of Vietnam. Overall, through the struggle for national independence and liberation nation building, the party, state, and people of Vietnam have received the understanding, support, and sincere assistance of the party, state, and people of the Soviet Union. The comprehensive, extensive, and valuable support from the Soviet Union for many decades have been an important factor contributing to the success of the national liberation, reunification, and healing the wounds of war for the Vietnamese people. The Soviet Union and Vietnam, in fact, became strategic allies on the front lines against imperialism, colonialism, and hostile forces. As long as the Soviet Union continues to be the leading beacon of a revolutionary movement worldwide, the steadfast fortress fighting for freedom for the working class will always be a deep, loyal, and profound friendship between the two nations. Long live. We should defense treaty. And ask for aid. And as a crucial ally to Vietnam, the Soviet Union has always been able to help in our struggle for independence and rebuilding the country. We hope that after all this time, we can still trust and provide us with help in times of our need. Nice. We're really trying to set ourselves up to be successful here. Look at that. I think these guys are going to win. Kitsanga faction? You're going to better please go ahead? I think the K faction is going to win. Send these guys here first, maybe. We need way more guns and whatnot. Well, we need maybe not way more guns, but <clears throat> infantry, anti air, and anti tank. Anti 
tank. I do not have any anti-air. Oh, no wonder we're not making many of it. We have none of it. And continue the neutrality pa policy. We should stay out of the conflict between the two superpowers. We want to stay in good relations with the People's Republic of China and the Soviet Union. We aim to continue policy neutrality and develop a country without major powers intervening in it. Ninth Party Congress. The situation of the country after 15 years of doing more has achieved many important accomplishments, creating a foundation and strength to push the renovation process deeper. However, we still face challenges. Falling further behind economically compared to many countries in the region and the world, deviating from the socialist path, bureaucratic corruption, and peaceful evolution caused by hostile forces. Losing opportunities, overcoming challenges, and then developing strongly in the new era is a matter of vital importance for our party and people. The Ninth National Congress, the party's first congress of the 21st century, will take place in this context, aiming to outline the development strategies for the country for the years of 2001 to 2005 and 2001 and 2010. Major defense pact with the Cambodian losses next after this one. That would be the solid, solid base of the everything. But you're learning a lot, which is great. Who knew going to Africa could mean you could learn a lot? We did. Jungle Rat, Ranger, Mountaineer, Commando, Engineer, Trickster. Infantry Leader, Organizer. Oh, Widespread Protest on Highlands. That's not good. <clears throat> According to the latest news from the Ministry of Public Security, uh, yesterday hundreds of Montenagards armed with poles, daggers, and spades, marched with the Great Solidarity Square in Plaikyu City, where the headquarters of the People's Committee of Gia Lai province was besieged overnight. The headquarters of the Communist Party of Vietnam building in Gia Lai province was ransacked around 9 a.m. The Gia Lai Provincial Police Headquarters was under control by the Montagnards at 11 a.m. The next day, violent protesters, protests were erupted in Dak Lak, Gia Lai, and Tokon Tum provinces with the majority of the ethnic minority participants. Thousands of ethnic minorities marched alongside tractors, while with many demonstrating in the city center of Buon Ma Thuat. Uh, police reinforcements were blocked on National Highway 14 by the Mont Montaganard's forces. Here, the Ministry of Public Security is deploying hundreds of police officers to approach Plaikyu City by a helicopter and truck. After many negotiations, the mutual defense treaty between the Indochinese countries were finally signed in uh, Vientiane, Respectful will serve our nations to defend each other from potential enemies and foreign political rivals. The treaty consists of four main articles. One, the particles are undertake to settle any international disputes in which they may be involved by peaceful means in such a manner that international peace and security by and justice are not endangered and to refrain in their international relations from the threat or use of force in any manner inconsistent with the purpose of the United Nations or obligations assumed by the party towards the United Nations. Two, uh, the parties will consult together whenever in the opinion of either of them, the political independence or security of either of the parties of a threatened by external armed attack. Separate and jointly, uh, by self-help and mutual aid, the parties shall maintain and develop appropriate means to deter armed attack and will take suitable measures in consultation and agreement to implement this treaty and its further purpose. Article 3. Each party recognizes that an armed attack in the Pacific are on either of the parties and territories now under their respective administrative control, or hereafter recognized by one of the parties as lawfully brought under the administrative control of the other, will be dangerous to its own peace and safety, and declare that it would act to meet the common danger in accordance with the constructed constitutional processes. Article 4. The treaty shall remain in force indefinitely. May the red flag prevail and fly in Indochina. Interesting. Thai military is power. Look at that. End of the protest. Thanks to the efforts of the security forces, the protest has effectively gradually subsided. With most protesters returning home after being persuaded by the police, with those who were originally aggressive have been arrested. <clears throat> Asian financial disaster. Look at that. However, several hundred Montagnards have fled across the border and outside of southern Cambodia. Many battalions of the Vietnamese People's Army have been deployed in the Central Highlands to control the border areas adjacent to Cambodia. At the same time, uh, <coughs> our armed forces are cooperating with the Cambodian border, border forces to apprehend those who are legally crossing the border. Although the protests have been largely quelled, the Ministry of Public Security has strongly addressed the issue, and preliminary investigations have shown that there are hostile exto external forces exciting the people through land and religious issues, directly targeting the Dega Central Highlands organization with support from the U.S., of course. At present, it's difficult for us to openly criticize the U.S., but policies and measures must be taken to such prevent such incidents from recurring. That's our relief, of course. Ooh, nice. So... As much as I want mobile warfare, I don't think that's going to be the best for us, especially fighting the jungles. Combined warfare actually might be really good for us for this campaign. Organization, defense, grand assault, heavy 
infantry, infantry, fighting vehicles, brigade size, max planning. Get a decent amount of organization. Get some more uh, coordination too. Breakthrough. Uh, central planning, C3I. A little more organization, or you go this way. More breakthrough in organization. Uh, that's okay. Supply consumption goes down. One more land I attack. Uh, recon's okay. How about guerrilla warfare? Bonus to militia. Much more population. Which we don't need. Resistance growth. Infantry support. Defensive and max entrenchment. Soft attack. Stability goes way down. Terror tactics. Aggressive mobility. Coordinated offensives. How much organization does infantry get for this one? So, well, let's go, let's go down here first. Uh, that's a lot of coordination. Oh, a lot of soft attack. You get uh, five. Okay, honestly, you don't get very much organization at all. Ten, maybe at most. You get 15 over here. Why would we not choose delay then? Or just speaking strictly organizationally wise, 10% more defense on organization right there. 10, 15, 15, 20. 20 if you can take the right path. So we're still stuck at 15 here. Or 10, I guess. 10, 15. Twenty. You get twenty on this side. Over here. You get this one ten for twenty-five. I mean, if you if you go to the left path, you get way better recovery rate for a heavy infantry. You get even more organization for infantry. You can get more population if you need them for this one. For other tactics. Backhand blows, I, I've heard, is very, 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 very good. Screw that. We're going to go with mobile warfare. It's probably not worth it, but maybe it is, actually. The Wanderers. Social Republic of Vietnam, Independence, Freedom, Happiness. Request for returning farmland. Two, Mr. Village Chief and Village Leadership of the Bak Son. Respectfully submitted to the Kami People's Committee of Hoa Bin. My name is Vu Ngoc Quang, spouse of Luang Thi Nu. I'd like to present the following situation. I have a plot of farmland with an area of 2.8 hectares. Due to health conditions, I'm unable to cultivate it, but therefore I'm submitting the request to the village leadership to inform them. This family plot of land has been returned, and I have no further claims related to it. Sincerely, thank you. Applicant, Wu Nong Kuang. Letters to for the student's notebook with numerous eraser markers. It's a familiar hand that used to plow and write and crook characters with a commitment. If the state has any policy changes in the future, I will not object. The letter is a conclusion of a piece of farmland in Thai Bin. Throughout a century, like most of the rice fields in Vietnam, it has absorbed the blood, sweat, and dedication of many generations of farmers. It witnessed a famine in 1945. It was handed over to them thanks to the land reforms of 53 to 56. It witnessed the success and failure of the cooperative movement in the 70s to 80s, and it wound through industrialization and economic opening in the 90s into 2000s. And now, 60 years after the joy of farming, sharing farmland from the landlords, those farming families are requested to return the land to the state. It no longer holds any economic value for them. Alongside the roadsides of Tai Bin, the land of legends about rice fields, all that can be seen are abandoned fields overgrown with weeds. We only cultivate when there's no other way to make a living. Nice job, infantry. You're learning a lot. Trickster, too. Beautiful. Oh! Ah, should have gotten that one, but whatever. At least we didn't lose there. It's alright. Can't win them all. Few of position in the party. I like this general secretary in 1997 during a time division within the party. Ge General Secretary Le Cap Few did not have a strong base of support within the party from the outset. On the eve of the 9th Party Congress, key members of the Invitatory Council of the Central Executive Committee, including former leaders of the De Duc, Le Duc An, Do Mui, and Volkan Kit, sent letters criticizing Few, attributing rural unrest and riots in the Central Highlands to weaken his leader to his weak leadership, alongside factionalism and corruption within the party. Additionally, former General Secretary Do Mui openly criticized the bilateral trade agreement with the United States arguing that it favored American interests excessively and would make Vietnamese companies vulnerable to competition from American firms. 
Reformers criticize few for hesitation and unwillingness to reform the state owned enterprises. On the other hand, Conservatives criticize them for the BTA and policies that increase the influence of the private sector and the economy. Ultimately, few have failed to gain support from either side. Furthermore, as perceived overly close relationship with China worsen in support, few have faced several criticisms for intervening in the negotiations over the Gulf of Tonkin, yielding to Chinese pressure and agreeing to China's boundary demarcation without prior approval from the Political Bureau, the Central Committee, or even the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the body supposed to conduct the primary negotiations with China. Despite these challenges, Le Ka Fu continues to campaign within the Political Bureau and the Central Committee to re-elect him for the next term, emphasizing the situation in rural areas in the Highlands and the necessity of political stability. Interesting. Conclusion from the Central Highland events. There are many reasons behind the situation in the Central Highlands, but it all starts with difficulties faced by ethnic minorities in the late 20th century, which were not timely addressed by the party and local authorities. Full of role in hostile forces took advantage of the situation. They targeted the stomach of the people, disguised themselves under the guise of volunteering for the people, aiming to carry out political schemes and subversive tactics to address this issue. Two solutions were proposed in the political bureau meeting. Firstly, actively implement effective programs, projects, and policies for ethnic minorities and social welfare to produce poverty and sustainability, build new rural areas, preserve and promote the cultural identity of an ethnic minorities, maintain law and order, and contribute to stabilizing and improving the lives of ethnic minorities. Second, to continue to promote mass mobilizations to build political foundations and address the fundamental issues of full role in terrorist organizations in the Central Highlands provinces. The police forces in the Central Highlands provinces will be re reinforced by the Ministry of Public Security to deploy comprehensive measures, establish dozens of major operations, and effectively fight, gradually dismantle, and eliminate these organizations. First option. Second option. Only children choose, adults take it all. Maybe we could go with some alternative way. Well, I'll take it all, but I think I want it there. I'm no, I really need to go to sleep, uh, but whatever. At the time of recording, because I'm exhausted. But if you enjoyed the first episode of us playing as good old Socialist Republic of Vietnam, please consider leaving a fat like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. We'll see what else we can do to expand uh, the reformist Vietnam into something bigger and greater. Thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day.